Hey friends, how's it going? Today, we're working on the wife's 2013 Cadillac CTS and we're doing something a lot of people want to do or attempt to do or do. We are gonna bypass the Bose factory amp in this so I can install an aftermarket Alpine amp. There's a couple of different versions of the stereo system in this Cadillac. My wife's car has the non-navigation unit. So this will look a little bit different if you have the navigation unit versus non-navigation. I'll point out those differences. Plus there's gonna be a file to download. There's a link down in the description below. Grab that file if you're gonna do this yourself to make it much easier. There's a couple of different ways to do this. We are completely bypassing the factory amp in this. It's got some issues, it's going out, it's common to happen, but there will be no factory sub, no factory center dash speaker, 100% bypassing all of that in this video. And to do this, we're gonna be in the trunk, we're gonna have to take off this cover back here. So we're gonna get started by taking off the panel on the driver's side back here to get to that Bose amp. Here inside the trunk, it looks pretty straightforward, to be honest. There's this little uh, net holder part right there, pull off, and then we're gonna pop out some of these body panel clip things along the side right here. And I think these are really the only ones that we're gonna see back here. Then once we've got those clips out and that net holder out, we can pull this kind of out. It's just tucked back behind stuff. We don't have to pull this out all the way. We just have to slide it enough out of the way to get right here to this factory Bose amp. Now there's a couple different ways we could do this today. What we could do is we could run speaker wire from the back of the head unit all the way back here and just splice into the wires that come from this amplifier and go to the door. I'm using a diagram I found online that tells me which wires on the harnesses on this amp are what. I'll put a link down in the description where you can download this. I am going to go ahead and unplug all of these because each one of these has a different wire that I'm going to use. And there's gonna be wires going out to the speakers. And I'm gonna cut the wire that was coming out of the amp. I'm gonna splice the left channel speakers together before they ever go through the amp so that way the the uh, power coming from the back of the deck or from the amplifier I'm gonna install is gonna use the factory wire. If that makes sense to you. Hopefully it does. It makes sense in my head. Seems pretty easy. And these plugs, when they're up in here, there's just this little button you depress and you pull them out and these will only go in one way. And again, there's all these different wires on here that do different things. And without this uh, little diagram I've got here, I don't believe that I would be able to probably figure this thing out too easily without like getting kind of wild. Something to be aware of when you get this. There's two different factory stairs that came with this. There's one that had the info center that like would raise up out of the dash and the one that didn't. It just has the little tiny screen, which was the factory unit this car had. So there's a UQS and UQA option listed on the side here. Honestly, for me to figure this out, I just looked at this first plug I'm working with and pin number one would either be tan or gray depending on whether I had UQS or UQA. So then when I look at my plug right here, look at it from this direction, the first pin right here is actually a gray one. So mine is going to be UQA labeled on here. Another way I can tell, you'll see pin number two right here only has an option for UQS, which would be a light gray. Well, I don't have a pin number two. Number two is actually this empty pin right there. So again, when I look at this, I'll be looking at the ones that say UQA because those will be the ones that coincide with the wiring that I will actually be using on this harness. So that's how you're going to help kind of decipher this chart when you're going through it to either UQA or UQS depending on which factory stereo was in your vehicle. There is one more way you can check to see which amplifier you have, whether it's analog or digital. In your trunk, if you get your spare tire cover here, and you lift it up, you're actually gonna have a tag back here, service part identification, and it's going to list all of the code um, for your card with, for all the different options. And what we're gonna do is go down to use, and right there you can see UQA. So that's again another way 
to tell which wire harness you're gonna get. It's either gonna be UQA or UQS. Something else I did to make this a little easier. I actually went through the wire harness link that I'm gonna have and I just wrote down all the wires that are on the corresponding wire harness for just the UQA code. So just the stereo that's actually in here. I wrote down what each of the wires are and I might type this out and put a link in uh, the description down below so you guys can just print this out to see the wires you'll actually need. Nice thing about this, if you ever decide you wanna add a sub and you wanna use a line out converter, this shows which wires would actually be used for that as well. I'm gonna be using wire cutters slash strippers and I'm gonna be using some watertight uh, heat shrink butt connectors. These butt connectors, I'm gonna actually use to splice the wires together after I cut them back here. And then you use just like a, a little heat gun to heat these up and shrink this down so water and stuff won't get back there. Not that I'm worried about it, but we are in the trunk, so just in case. And then to give myself just a little bit more wire to play with, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the little clips that hold this wire harness to the body on the inside here. So I can pull this harness out here and work on it where I've got more room instead of being way back here in the corner trying to do this. If you haven't done so, be sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave me some comments. I appreciate it. And then here you can see I used the, pulled those clips out of the wall just using like the body panel tool there, put it behind it, popped those out. So now I've actually got these harnesses out here a lot easier for me to peel off this protective covering, get to those wires and start cutting and splicing this wire loom tape stuff. It's gonna get your fingers all gross and sticky. Pull it off and it's gonna leave the, the wires kinda sticky too, but having the exposed wire back here to be able to cut it off is a lot better than cutting it off super short and not ever being able to reattach it if you wanted to go back to the factory stereo system. So on this first plug here, this is the X1 plug. It's got eight wires. Really, there's only two wires that I'm gonna cut on here and they're the ones that are in the number one and number five pin the gray and tan wires they're the left front outputs the positive and negative speaker wires right there so we're gonna go ahead and cut these off back here and strip them and set that off to the side there those wires are cut and then i'm just gonna tape these on here and let them hang off because i'm gonna just totally bypass the wire here i'm gonna take the wires here and connect them to the wires come I've stripped those wires back. I'm going to go ahead and put a butt connector on this side and crimp it down and then these two wires will be ready. Now those are on there. I'll just use some uh, heat and that'll shrink these ends down onto the wire to give us a nice waterproof seal. Now those are the left front output wires, so these go to the left front speaker. All right, I do need to amend my video, make an update. So I had bypassed the harness on here with the inputs to the outputs. There must be a signal processor or something between the head unit and this amp. It didn't sound awesome. So I ended up going back, running speaker wires from the deck to the back of the vehicle and I've just got them taped right now just to test it. And this is the way to do it. Don't do it the way I had showed. I'll actually edit the video and put this part in. But now I'm going to go through and use the butt connectors on here and butt connect it. So when you bypass this amp, very important, don't just use the inputs and outputs on the Bose amp here. Only use the output wires going to the speakers. Get your signal from the deck. Run speaker wire from the stereo up front to the back and connect that. I would strongly recommend doing these one speaker at a time just to avoid uh, confusion. I did go turn the car on, turn the radio on just to verify that left front speaker does work. Everything's unplugged, the amp's not plugged in. The only speaker that came on was the left front. It's super quiet because right now I'm running just the sound off of the deck and it's not amplified. But we're gonna put that amplifier on the back of the, the stereo later, the head unit, and we're gonna splice into the wires behind the deck. So we're gonna have the amplifier 
amplified speakers with the Alpine amplifier or just as opposed to the Bose. You could run speaker wire from the back of the stereo to each of the speakers or from the back of the stereo all the way back here to the amp and then splice into the wires just like I am here that go to the speaker and that would still bypass the amp as well. And then since I am done with this one plug now, I went ahead and just used electrical tape and just covered up that wire, just wrapped up that wire to keep it all together, make it look nice and neat when it's uh, all tucked away and plugged back in. So now I've just gone with the right rear. It was just uh, the top of the list when I came down the list for the next wires I'm gonna work on. So it's a light blue and dark blue, which were these wires off of the second plug. So I'm gonna strip those back, get butt connectors on. So I'm just gonna go through really quick, cut and splice all of those wires, and then I'll get back with you guys when that's done to show you the finished product there. Okay, so we've got all of the wires connected. And again, I'll leave a link to the, the main file with the uh, the plugs and everything listed for UQA and UQS, that's analog and digital amplifiers. So you can download that. I'll probably have to put it on my Discord and leave a link to that. So look for that down in the description. And then maybe I'll type this up and put it in a Word file or something. But what we've got now is we have the first plug, which was X1. It's got like the, the power and the subwoofer and all of that stuff still connect. And then we've got the X2 plug, which is uh, this plug here. The only thing that is still plugged in and connected is that wire right there and that's for the center speaker which will not work with this setup because we're gonna be bypassing that and then the rear one here this one's got your remote your mute um, wires on there and that's the only thing that's still left on that plug so i'm gonna go ahead and use some electrical tape like i said tape this up really quick and then go ahead and plug it back in here's the uh, aftermarket deck on my wife's car let it power on here and then we're gonna check the sound to make sure everything is actually properly. So, fader, left works, right works, rear right works, and rear left works. So, stereo wired up successfully bypassed the Bose amp. And now we've got the amp all plugged back in. And there it is, guys. That's how you bypass the factory Bose amp in this car. Again, completely bypassed. Right now, it's hooked up just to the head unit for sound. But I'm going to be installing an amplifier in my next video. So be sure to subscribe, like, follow along so you can get notified when that video goes live as well.